Hello, and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? Uh, hope you had a good weekend. I was at work for the weekend, so, yep. <laughs> that was fun. That was pretty straightforward. But, you know, oh yeah, we'll get a weapon shot going here. Uh, working on Diamond Art Club's I Am by Ravine Phelan. Okay. This dragon here. Uh, diamond shape round. 20 inches by 28 inches. 51 centimeters by 71 centimeters. Oops. 29 colors. Uh, with two ABs, which stands for Aurora Borealis. It's just uh, uh, drills that have extra shinier coating on them. Just to help them stand out, stand out a bit. Just to give you that extra pop of color and sparkle. So there you go. <laughs> All right, yeah, just basically have a color left in this section and then I'll move the canvas, uh, yeah, move up a section, start on the dragon's head. So we'll just find a 445 apparently. DMC code 445. Yep, just have a few of these to do, and then, yeah, start a new section. Okay, 445. Oops, shaking the table. Yeah, so hopefully everybody had a good weekend. Mine was alright, it's all good. Fairly straightforward weekend. It's all good. Hopefully everybody is okay after uh, Hurricane Ida. Yeah, we got a, up here in Canada and Ontario, we got a good low pressure arm that came off of Ida. It could very well still be going down there from what I've seen, but hopefully everybody's okay. Yeah, it looked pretty uh, nasty. What hurricane is not that makes landfall? Yeah, it's still pretty scary, no matter what a category of hurricane it is. Yeah, it's you need rain, but yeah. <laughs> So when you get a little too much, plus uh, other stuff, high winds and all that. Yeah, we got a pretty good uh, low pressure system from Ida. So, oh, Murder of Crows is back. Great. <laughs> Came to party. I don't know, it's not very hot so far today. So it's not too bad. I'm sure I'll just turn around and warm up. Didn't it? I'm in the shot, right? Okay. <laughs> Thought so. Yeah, the sun's basically out now. Yeah. Yeah, there's still clouds around, but what had been uh, occurring last night has uh, blown over. Basically, when I got home from work, I had came into the house and then I, the storm started. <laughs> so I had like really good timing there. I seen the bank of dark clouds. It was chasing me home from work last night, so I knew it was coming. <laughs> really dark gray clouds. <laughs> and then it's like nice and uh, clear in front of you, front part of the car, and then 
behind you in the review mirror. Nice bank of dark clouds. It's quite fun. It followed me home. <laughs> nice little downpour sideways, fallen rain, thunderstorms. Lost the satellite a couple times, but the power didn't go out, as far as I know. So, there you go. The, the corn behind us will just absolutely love the rain. But yeah, there's cobs on the stalks now, and yeah. So, corn should be ready in a couple more weeks, I'd imagine. I don't know the maturing date for how long corn really takes to grow. I don't know, a month or so? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just getting some coffee before it gets cold. <laughs> But yeah, pretty straightforward day so far. I just watched a part of a movie on TV. Yeah, while well, I chilled with the cat, and then uh, he Axel shared his claws with me. <laughs> Put a hole in my hand. <laughs> So cute. <laughs> you know, once the cat gets the claws out, you really should stop petting him. <laughs> yeah, nah, I didn't stop immediately. I guess I just wanted to... Some claw under the skin, you know. Let's give that cat that two seconds more of love that he didn't want. <laughs> or didn't know that he wanted. <laughs> I don't know, it just pay attention to the cat and then then they like runs away from you and then he's like yowling in the hall, and like crying in the hall. It's like away from everybody. It's like seriously, we're like all in here, I'm willing to pet you and all that. And you're crying in the hall. It's away from everybody. Like cat, make up your mind, jeez. <laughs> Cats are like that, very temperamental. There was like a sand fly or something on the front window in the living room there. It was on, like, outside. <laughs> and the cat was batting at the window and just getting all frustrated. <laughs> he couldn't kill it. <laughs> Like practically gonna rip the curtains down in the living room there, just trying to get to the sand fly or whatever it was. Uh, just hanging out on the glass of the window. <laughs> oh man, we just have a cat, very temperamental creature, but he's cute. He's. Fluffy and cute kitty. Late at night, he just gets really annoying. My mom goes to read. I don't know, around 8 o'clock or so at night. Like, she just goes to the bedroom, her bedroom, and, like, reads before she goes to sleep. Ooh. Oh, excuse me, a yawn was escaping there. Holy cow. Yeah, so in the evenings, uh, my cat just becomes a pain. And my dad and uh, I usually chase him or try to pick him up and pat him and all that. And then he just does that crying in the hall. And then 
we have our recliner in the living room that he likes going behind, scratching the wall and the chair, and we just like freak out at him and spray him with a bottle of water. But five minutes after getting sprayed with water and like licking himself to like clean him, the water off, he's back there and doing it again. So I don't know. <laughs> Can't reason with a cat half the time. <laughs> it's kind of like, seriously. You don't like getting sprayed with water, but it's a really weird way to get attention. That's <laughs> how I'm looking at it. It's like, just stop going back there. We have like, places on the walls in the main part of the house where he's scratched the wallpaper off or the paint and there's like claw marks distinctly in the wall in a couple spots it's like just that uncanny urge or instinct to scratch sharpen the claws or whatever Oh, he has a scratching post and all that, and he still scratches up the rug, and... When I'm, like, doing something in the kitchen, like cooking supper or something, you hear that scratching on a rug. And I just, like, freak out and, like, chase him away. He scratches a couple rugs, anyway. It's like you have a scratching post for crying out loud, and you just keep... Scratching these two rugs, like, just because. It's just that wired-in animal instinct to... It's a defensive mechanism, I guess. Cats to naturally want to sharpen their claws, like... Yeah, they're sharp, all right, and... Don't need to reason any of that out. I get swatted at and scratched like almost every day that you hold the cat, no matter what you're doing. We kind of like cradle him when we lift him. We don't lift him like legs first or whatever. We like flip him over and kind of like cradle him with his belly like facing us, kind of cradle him. Not sure if he likes it too much, but that's, I don't know. And he's got his, like, puts his paws, like, up to our faces. <laughs> like, just the paws, not, like, no claws. And he's just, like, batting on her face. <laughs> it's just... I don't know, and usually lasts, like, 10 or 15 seconds, and then you have to set him down and then he just runs back out to like uh, the door that joins the main house and the addition like that entryway <laughs> I don't know he just wants to be chased or he just wants that attention and then you're giving him attention and then he just starts getting his claws out and swatting at you because he's had too much attention. It's like, he's very weird. <laughs> Cats what, want what they want, but after they've had enough, then they just freak out. It's like, temperamental. <laughs> Temperamental fluff ball. <sighs> oh, well, he's cool. No, oh, it's, it's nice having a cat. <laughs> no, it's like an adopted child, I guess you could say. I adopted him from the Humane Society, so. <laughs> it's just 
Justice. Yeah, after our Siberian Husky died, we took a break from having pets. Yeah, because that was rough. Uh, Kanuka died of natural causes, passed away, age, I believe, as far as I know. Yeah, just one night she passed away on in the backyard, so... Yeah, <laughs> that's the way she goes. So we just took our time, took the backyard fence down that she would run back and forth in. Like she went outside, of course. Like what dog wouldn't? Uh, Axel's indoor. Our cat's an indoor cat. So yeah, <laughs> we've had a couple pets that got hit by cars that were outdoor cats. Yeah, just cats that were. We've had to put one down. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, Casper was a white cat and he had a urinary tract infection. Yeah, so we had to put him down. Yeah, I didn't take that well. I was, I was pretty young. Probably eight or something at the time. Yeah, I think that vet building is still there in Stratford. Just don't look at that building the, the same. <laughs> Ever since, went there to put Casper down. Yeah, I've had a few pets, but uh, Tigger was a tabby. He didn't pass away. Uh, here, anyway. <laughs> Send him to a farm. Yeah. He was uh, pretty fluffy. Yeah, very fluffy kitty. Uh, I'm sure he's fine now. Or... Had been fine, a lot healthier, because he didn't have a uh, dog food dog food to eat all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's back when we had Kanuka. We had Kanuka and Tigger, and Tigger would just uh, be in the basement, and then every once in a while would uh, sneak up and eat the dog's food. Yeah. Yeah, talking about pets today. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pretty random. <laughs> yeah, this echo as a color is very random. Just talk about whatever comes to mind, really. Sometimes. <laughs> Other times it gets pretty quiet. I just hang out in color or diamond paint. That's more me with coloring. Uh, coloring, uh, color in chats can get pretty quiet. <laughs> just me coloring sometimes I don't know <laughs> it's, it's just I don't know it takes a little bit more com uh, concentration to color than uh, it is to diamond paint probably that extra hand eye hand coordination and yeah you have to color a certain segment of space in with a marker or whatever. Yeah, it, it's a different level of concentration. Okay, so there's that section. It's lower neck. Okay, so that strip is done. So I'm gonna pull the canvas up. Yeah, I'll just go like this. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do like a pretty generous section again. This is like the beginning of the dragon's head, like right here. And then the neck, and then, yeah, more back of the head here. So, yeah, we're getting there. Okay, there's probably going to be a bit of a crinkling. I have to pull this cover paper back. Okay, yeah. Arm. <laughs> okay. 
yeah, we're getting there. But I still have a ways to go. Like, we're going to be doing this canvas for a bit longer anyway. But, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, no rush to finish a canvas on this channel. I, yeah, not rush. I just do what I can with the time that I have, so. <laughs> Oh yeah, excuse the cover paper. Uh, how far do I want to go? Is the thing. Next thing. Okie dokie. There we go. Alright, so I kind of do a serpentine kind of uh, <laughs> sectioning, <laughs> large sections and uh, yeah, so I'll move over a bit just so I don't have to tweak with the camera too much. Uh, okay, on the other side of the paper, okay, we're good, okay. It's basically, yeah, and I call this like a section. Yeah, it's very generous, but yeah, this is basically it. That's almost half, if not a bit over for the canvas. So, you know, we'll just continue on. Uh, yeah, I kind of have a like a artificial uh, kind of boundary already. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. This section will keep me busy. It's all good for a while. Here, let's put this cover behind her back. Yeah, that plastic's really well hidden, so. Okay, yeah, well, just... Yeah, I'll just continue with 445 for now. There's a few spots. I'd save getting it out later. Okay, so, dark over here. Yeah, just a few more spots. Yeah, just here. Yeah, just a few. It's not very many drills left of this color, so... <laughs> yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this might be... Oh, I could be wrong. Might be the last of this particular color, but... The dragon does have horns... At the top of the canvas, so there still might be... A couple more... Uh spots of this color but yeah we'll just carry on it's all good there yeah i don't think i'll need to like outline a boundary i can just go by the edge of the head here yeah that's good yeah this is really cool Oops, my wax is wearing out again, but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I use wax until I cannot pick up a drill, period. I have plenty of wax, so I don't worry about uh, just mixing it around. I just get rid of it. I don't try reusing it or anything. Worst case, I can just order more wax off of Etsy because I'm pretty sure there's uh, sellers that just sell wax like uh, for diamond painting. 24? Okay. I kind of have a bit of glare, so I just kind of had to look. Ah. 
one viewer says I do place my drills straight, but yeah, there they slide a little. <laughs> well, yeah, you kind of have to be neat when you're diamond painting, but like, don't. Yeah, don't be freaking out if uh, you put a drill on crooked. Like, yeah, just have a pair of tweezers handy. It's in case it does go off kilter a bit. There are instances where drills can slide on diamond art club canvases. Like after you put the drills down for some reason. It's just the adhesive. If you're not overly happy with how you place the drill or it's sliding too much. Uh, you can usually just put a place a drill next to it and it'll help straighten it. Or you can lift it up with a pair of tweezers and try to, yeah, put it back down again. Yeah. Don't worry too much, don't fret too much about being absolutely perfect with uh, placing drills on these canvases. Yeah, as long as you're covering the symbol, like, you're good. I know there are probably some, like, uh, canvases that have those training circles, training wheels, so they're called. Yeah, in some instances they're kind of, yeah, circular shapes with some of these symbols. But the drills are big enough to cover the symbols, but yeah, I do understand the frustration where you can see, like, the outline of the symbols after you've placed the drills. I've heard of that. Yeah, that that's a bummer. It's sometimes beyond anybody's control most of the time. Yeah, I do understand that frustration. But generally with Diamond Art Clubs, yeah, your symbols are covered. If, yeah, they're placed like right over the symbol. Yeah, and for squares, yeah, some of your squares are off kilter. They usually, you can usually straighten them out by placing a square next to them. Like all around the square that you're worried about. They do straighten themselves as you place other squares uh, adjacent to the one that you're concerned about. They do straighten out. But worst case, yeah, just have a pair of tweezers handy. Yeah, don't don't sweat about perfection. This isn't. Yeah, don't stress out. You're all doing great. It's great that you're starting like trying squares out if it's your first time. I've seen a couple posts about that. Yeah, don't don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> if you have a few crooked drills, it's okay. <laughs> like I'm not perfect, so. Uh, you shouldn't have to be. <laughs> it's all good. Just enjoy what you're doing. No sweat. Yeah, it's a hobby. Like, it's just not... <laughs> just make it a hobby. <laughs> it's meant to be seen from a distance anyway, the canvas. But, yeah. Don't worry about being perfect. It's okay. Just as long as you're placing the correct drill on the correct symbol, like correct color of drill. That's a little more, yeah, <laughs> important <laughs> for sure to get the canvas you intend to get. Yeah. <laughs> couple slightly crooked drills on a canvas, yeah, it's not going to be the end of the world. Nah. It'll be okay. And I'm sticking to the adhesive again. <laughs> so this is a new section. Ah, that drill fell right off. Didn't even pick up. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Just have fun. Enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know, I might end up doing a paint-by-number picture sometime. Yeah, I'm still a little leery about, like, where to do it, but... 
eventually I may try it. Yeah, probably not here on the drafting table. Uh, yeah. Unless I had a lot of butcher paper down or something. A lot of paper down. Yeah. And it would have to be, yeah, this table would have to be lying flat. Yeah, yeah. It's still a little leery about paint by number, but I do have a... a couple pictures that are paint by number, or a kit of four, or whatever. Yeah, nah. Yeah, it'd be something different, but it's not like I'm gonna dive headlong into <laughs> paint by number kits. Yeah, it'd be like a whole other thing to do on the channel. Yeah, I might end up very well liking. Oh, that, that's where that drill went. Yeah, paint by number can be like beautiful, but yeah. I have enough trouble like uh, doing color, color and jets. <laughs> I usually get sucked into doing diamond painting a lot more. It's just easier to come out here. Like, I can come out here late at night and into the studio and, like, do... Uh, I can diamond paint any time, really. Well, yeah, I could bring my color-by-number books out here and just color somewhere else. Uh, that's true, but... I, I don't know. <laughs> Be a solution of some sort. I don't know. I still color, but it's just, yeah, I don't have the enough books to really, like, do a scope of different pictures without having to worry about copyright. So that's why color and chats are kind of here and there. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Just don't have enough books to really... <laughs> It's okay. They'll come along every now and then. It's not... I have, like, no fixed schedule on this channel. It's just... I just like hanging out and coloring when I can and diamond painting when I can. That's basically echoes of color for you. Yeah, the channel's pretty straightforward, down to earth. Yeah, that's the way I like it. Nothing fancy. <laughs> yeah. It's just crafting and just randomness. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way I like it. Yeah, I have a pretty basic title card beginning and end. The whip and chat or color and chat. And then, yeah. Those are, <laughs> that's basically my videos, like, really. Unboxings, yeah, on occasion, canvases that I'm going to work on. Yeah, and I do flip through all the coloring books that I do have, and then color out of the pages, yeah. Yeah, pretty straightforward. <laughs> like, nothing too fancy, per se. It's all good. Yeah, just like being down to earth, straightforward. Just get to the good stuff <laughs> fairly quick. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, that's yeah. Every channel is different and creative, and it's all good. Okay, is that all for that? Yeah, I think so. Yep, that's probably it for... Uh... Okay, we'll do this down arrow next. Okay, let's pour the rest of 445 here. Back into the container.
Yeah, this down arrow is scattered throughout this section as well. Okay, what's the down arrow? If I have the right symbol to... Yep, okay, approximately 498. All right, it is, oh, one of the reds, it's the dark, it's the dark red, whoops, way more than I need as usual. Oh, oh working with a big tray is nice though, it's probably like the first time in a while. Thirty-five. Good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> gonna finish off my coffee here it, it's almost cold yeah sip and enjoy your coffee nope not if it's cold <laughs> Sl chug <laughs> just after a while it's basically just uh, getting caffeine in your system so you don't suffer from uh, caffeine withdrawal that's basically me. <laughs> sure, the first cop of the day. Yeah, it's always good. But yeah, the uh, cops throughout the rest of the cops throughout the day. It's just yeah. So I don't get a headache or something. But I'm generally good with uh one cup of coffee some days. Just as long as you have that initial caffeine. Yeah, that's the trouble of caffeine addiction. Or any addiction, you, your body now expects it to be included in your day, in your routine. Alright. My... Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm still... Okay. I thought it was cutting off. Uh, I'm just gonna go section. Uh, I'm not gonna do row by row here. Just uh, kind of do sections, kind of like I have been doing for scales, which I did in the lower portions of the canvas. Yeah, I'll just kind of do that. Uh, kind of slow arcing upward pattern on the sections. It's a little easier. Yeah, because these arrows are everywhere. These down arrows. Because we got the neck and then the start of the head. And then the back of the neck. Yeah. <laughs> and then part of the underside of that wing. Yeah, it's kind of around here. Yeah, it's... Holy cow. <laughs> this picture is a party, but it's beautiful. So... Glad to be doing it. <laughs> it just gets a little uh, complex. You just gotta do a symbol at a time. Yeah, just break something down that looks overly complicated. Just break it down into pieces. And uh, yeah, just kind of do a bit at a time. So you don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, because this is supposed to be fun, not a task. <laughs> not something you have to do. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be, and I hope. <laughs> I hope that's the response uh, <laughs> three quarters of the time when doing a canvas. I know there are, yeah can be large sections of one color or yeah you're probably sore or something you're not feeling well on a particular day yeah you're just yeah have to do other things yeah you want a diamond paint yeah it yeah it, it comes and goes it's a uh, yeah hobbies can be rough <laughs> Like, you get the first thought or an impulse to diamond paint, yet you're looking at it and you, like, have to do other stuff. 
Yeah, I just can't sit down and diamond paint all the time. <laughs> yeah, it can be kind of rough. Yeah, I do agree. Oh yeah, that canvas will always be there, waiting. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, so. Yeah, just do your hobby when you can. Yeah, when you're feeling better, oh boy. Or when you have some downtime for sure. Yeah, I might very well have to change this wax. There, I placed the drill of tweezers. There you go. You've seen it. <laughs> the every once in a while uh, drill place with tweezers. With a round drill. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen all the time. <laughs> every once in a while. I do it every once in a while, but not. I couldn't do a canvas with just tweezers. Nope, uh, give me this. <laughs> I'm sticking with a diamond painting pen, thanks. Mm. Uh, plenty of the pink pens from other kits, if uh, anything does happen to this pen. This applicator pen, which would be unfortunate, but... Might be a time. Stuff does happen. It be terrible, but I uh, gotta be realistic. Okay, wasn't sure if that wax was gonna go into the tip of the pen. It didn't want to at first. Okay, press it in. We'll get the usual extra bit of wax coming out the sides or whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna have drills going onto the wax and then falling right back off. There we go. Okay, we're back in business. So I had to get some new wax on there. Yeah, it naturally dries out and yeah, just after a while it just wears off. It's normal. Yeah, at first when I like kept seeing ads on Facebook for this, they mentioned like wax and I'm like, what? I was so confused. You just see them with like a pen and then they're just placing a drill onto the canvas. It's like, how are they doing this? What is this? <laughs> it was just like so enthralled and curious. Bet you that's what gets half the people interested in diamond painting. And then there's probably like another segment of people that look at it and you're there's somebody like placing single placing a drill or whatever. And then uh, that'd be my parents and my brother. It's like you're crazy. Like holy cow that's gotta be tedious. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it is fun to do. I do like this meticulous kind of detail stuff. Oh, for a fundraising campaign back when I lived in Stratford, uh, collated uh, do donation kind of packages, like letters and pamphlets and all that, to mail out. So yeah, it's collating documents putting them in a certain order and then uh, stuffing them in envelopes and then putting postage stamps on the envelopes to mail them out. That was uh, my community service for high school. The 40 hours that, I don't know if that's still required to get your high school diploma, but yeah, I basically did like 80 hours or whatever. Yeah, I totally blew that. 40 hours out of the water just doing that fundraising thing because my mom was volunteering at United Way at the time. She was like a volunteer rep or something. So I just did my community service there for high school and yeah, I was done. <laughs> you had to fill out a booklet or something of what you did for volunteer stuff. 
And yeah, I was done it like then like the first month that it was issued. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't have to, like, wait to do that kind of thing, it's just easier just to get it out of the way. Yeah. It's better than uh, procrastinating for, like, four years and then suddenly having to do 40 hours in, like, the last couple of months of your schooling career. Your high school stuff. So. Nah, it, that's just something you just get out of the way. It's easier. Then all you have to do is just worry about your, like, just getting credits from your other courses in order to be able to get your high school diploma. Because you have to get a certain amount of credits and stuff, certain marks in order to get that diploma to graduate, so I did. <laughs> Not an A plus student by any means, but I graduated and yeah, just work full time. I just did high school. I didn't go to college or anything. I, I just worked. I had no clue what <laughs> I wanted to do for a career. So it's just like yeah. I'll just work. <laughs> it's like, oh, you should go do a trade or something. Yeah, me with tools and... Yeah. I, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, but trades give you, like, that extra income oomph. That nice income jump. But... Yeah, like, plumber and uh, carpenter and electrician yeah there's probably demand out there for it but i don't know it depends on how you look at it uh whether there's demand for electricians and plumbers all the time i'd imagine so a uh, plumber definitely possibly but yeah there are extra stuff on the side like, probably gas fitting license. Uh, yeah, just plumbing in general. It Those are kind of math-based. Yeah, in a sense. Yeah, not really a math kind of guy either. So, yeah, math is, like, has a huge reach in a lot of uh, kind of trades. Probably like basic measure, measurement and surface area and all. I'm just not. Measure twice, cut once, kind of. The, yeah, I'm not really a power tools kind of guy. I can handle a drill. I can like, can handle power tools, but I'm not proficient by any means with them. It would take me longer to make something with a power tool because I've had experiences with uh, pieces of wood flying all over the place. A belt sander, yeah, I've flung pieces of wood, <laughs> blocks of wood before at my grandfather's house. Yeah, because I did help with the family business years ago, but not so much now. Yeah, I just let my dad do that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, that's all right. If I had to use, like, a drill press and all that, I could, yeah, just approach those kind of things with caution. I just have that kind of safety or over-safe mindset. Because it is, like, a spinning blade for like a table saw per se or drill press yeah like stuff can happen if you're not a hundred percent concentrating on 
what you're doing. I'm somebody who has to know exactly how to do something properly and then be able to do it step by step, carefully and properly the first time. It's easier. <laughs> Yeah, I keep kind of changing the boundary here, but yeah, <laughs> keep seeing these like uh, down arrows. Okay, there we go. Let's kind of establish this action here, like the upper row here. It's the plastics like right here, the cover. <laughs> so. Uh, Try not to diamond paint the cover. <laughs> I know a few of my like former school friends. A couple of them are in the trades, like plumber and electrician kind of thing. Yeah, they're happy. Yeah, they got there. But. Yeah, I have a feeling a lot more people, even my brother, knew what he wanted to do. Like, he, people I know have, like, always had that mindset or a vision for what they wanted to do. I just never, I just never carried with me. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm alright. I have a full-time job, so. Yeah, I work. I make money. It's just... Yeah, I don't have to be a multi-millionaire by any means. Like, money can take you places, but... It's all down to how you use it as well. How you utilize it. And, yeah, it can get you into trouble. Yeah, quite a few times it's gotten me into trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Money is sometimes a necessary evil, I guess, but yeah, it doesn't have to be. It's just how you utilize it. Three quarters of the time it's like bills, so it goes to bills, so kind of breathe a sigh of relief every time you get a paycheck kind of thing and you can uh, pay some bills so people don't come after you <laughs> or be freaking out that you're not paying this bill or whatever yeah there are some weeks where it does get dicey kind of spent like a bit more money on kind of fun stuff at, like, after paying bills, of course, but you just... Then there's, like, that week where I don't get paid. Like, I get paid bi-weekly. And then sometimes there's just, like, that crunch. It's like, do I have enough to do this? Yeah, I caught myself uh, doing that a couple times. It does happen. It's normal, but... If it's happening constantly, then you just gotta kind of learn how to just kind of control yourself a bit there. <laughs> That's not easy when uh, you see like a really nice diamond painting canvas or something you've wanted to get for a long time finally goes on sale or something. It's just that t temptation is there, like the money's there, but. It's like you know you shouldn't, and then, yeah, I've done that a few times. Yeah, it happens to the best of us, I'm sure. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, for, like, diamond painting canvases, it's, it can be hard to not purchase 
a canvas that you like love like right at the moment yeah it can be a uh, difficult sometimes or frustrating it's available but it's really hard to get but there's a time where you just can't afford it and then it's gone again <laughs> so nostalgic yeah i get that all the time <laughs> Yeah, you know, should be happy with what you have, but yeah, there are those times where definitely it's like, yeah, I've really been waiting for that canvas or that craft kit, etc. It's like you just want to break down and get it. Yeah, it's just it's natural. It's human nature. Nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have a stash video where I show my Diamond Art Club canvases. Yeah. That's over a period of time, but... Yeah. It's just what I've acquired over time. It's just... Yeah. Eh. Not showing off or anything, but yeah, it's pretty easy to... In most cases, to end up with a large amount of canvases, irregardless of what diamond company it is, just in general. Like, this is a hobby, like, for sure. So you're going to be like, oh, that canvas is awesome, let's get that. And then, yeah, you have, like, five or ten canvases within a couple months and, yeah, be uh, ready to write it in your will or whatever that you're gonna give these uh kits to your grandchildren or something <laughs> grandchildren or cousins yeah because there's probably enough canvases out in the world for to do in a lifetime or beyond somebody's lifetime yikes <laughs> yeah there there's canvases out there. Yeah, not necessarily like perfect by any means, but just canvases in general. Thousands, if not millions. Yeah, they're out there, but yeah, it's not exactly just click and voila, you have a canvas coming to you in the mail. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, I can understand that. Oh, just get what you can afford. Yeah. Do what you're comfortable with. Like, yeah. You just basically need a kit. It gives you everything you need to get started. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a fancy kit by any means. It doesn't have to be a fancy brand name. You're diamond painting it regardless. Or whatever you're cross stitching or etc. Yeah, that's kind of a blanket term. Or doing miniatures, jewelry making, etc. Yeah, resin. Yeah, that's <laughs> It's an expensive uh, hobby in itself, I'd imagine, right off the get-go. Just materials alone, I'm sure, can get pretty uh, dicey. But, yeah, it's a hobby. And you can make beautiful uh, pieces of artwork or items with resin. Or diamond painting. Or jewelry making. Yeah, it's your hobby. Candles. People make candles. Pottery. Yeah, there's always going to be like a hefty cost, like money-wise, related with most of these hobbies. Uh, crochet, knitting, yeah. Some of that yarn can be uh, pricey. Yeah, <laughs> it's an investment for most hobbies, to be honest. Yep, that's accurate. But just... Uh, get what you can afford. Don't, yeah.
pay your bills first. Yeah, do the necessary uh, expenses, and then over time, get uh, get some uh, crafting stuff. Yeah, just ease into it. Don't rush headlong. Yeah, so it can be hard <laughs> to control urges sometimes you just want to get stuff but yeah just try to be careful yeah don't get too carried away <laughs> Yeah, it can be inspiring and uh, definitely tempting when uh, a YouTube creator or fellow crafter is working on a kit or, yeah, working on a craft that you really love. <laughs> and, yeah, just can't uh, have, be doing that kit yourself, like, right at that moment. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's rough. I do understand. Yeah, it's happened to me a few times. <laughs> I see an awesome canvas is being unboxed, and I was like, I love that canvas. But at least you get to see it. Like, yeah, you're probably like not doing it like right now, but <laughs> eventually, maybe. Yeah, just gotta be patient. Hopefully. It's not a one that's getting discontinued. Yeah, a, a bummer to say, but yeah, reality, it's, yeah, it's, it sucks. Sometimes. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, because there was like a Diamond Art Club kit that was released this past Saturday. And uh, Diamond Art Club didn't like how it turned out. Uh, Lost Girl, or whatever it was called. It's a very toned down kind of piece, but the eyes didn't render very well. So a lot of people are just going to put black drills into where the, the eyes are for the girl. Yeah, it sold out within like probably first 20 minutes that, that canvas was posted. And they're not printing, they're discontinuing it because of the quality. It didn't quite meet their quality standards, which is fine. They basically posted a, basically posted the canvas and then people, yeah, they sold it for 50% off and yeah, it's no longer available, but I just thought I'd mention it. Yeah, it looks like a hit an hour. If I'm looking at the, yep. So, yeah, you've been watching Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. As always, I post uh, my Facebook profile name, uh, my Facebook Echoes of Color business page. It's just like an update kind of site on Facebook. Yeah, based on the channel here and my Instagram. Always be down in the description below the video. So feel free to peruse that. Like the... Facebook business page, Aquas of Color. And if you're on Instagram, yeah, just follow my tag or whatever, copy and paste it, and then, yeah, you're set to go. And you can see my content. There's uh, the odd meditation quote posted on Instagram and my Facebook as well. So, yeah, you'll see meditation quotes with the uh, my Facebook profile and my Instagram, not the Echoes of Color Facebook business page. Yeah, because Instagram posted onto my Facebook profile. I have it set it up that way, but that's okay. But anyway, I'll get this uh, posted, and yeah, life goes on. <laughs> All right, take care. See you around. Been a pleasure.